I greet you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Now, is it possible for one to have the best brands of water and various kinds of good liquid and still be thirsty? The word of God says in John 7 verse 37, on the last and greatest day of the festival, Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink, amen. God provided water for the Israelites in the wilderness, but the thirst quenching effects of this water were temporary. At a festival that celebrates God's provision and goodness in the wilderness, Jesus offers the living water that quenches all thirst and is a source of eternal life. Amen. On this note, I welcome you all to the presence of the Lord here on Hope Channel for a spirit-filled seventh-day revival under the theme, The Fountain is Open. That source of eternal life is open, praise God. It's day one of the seven days and it promises to be transformational even as the fountain fills us up. So get your family and friends together and take a plunge. Don't stop watching. Let us pray. Eternal Father, I want to thank you so much for this moment. Thank you, dear God, for a wonderful opportunity to plunge into this fountain that is open. We pray, dear God, that you will minister unto each and every one of us that have plunged in and meet us all at the point of our needs. Be with us tonight as we go through the topic and grant that our hearts will be open, our minds will be open to receive the truth in your word even as we plunge into this fountain that is open, for we have prayed in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. We'll take a song ministration and be right back.
A hymn writer, William Cowper, in one of his famous repertoires, notes, there is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's vein, and sinners plunged beneath its flood lose all their guilty stains. Hallelujah. This is our, our theme song for the Seven Days Revival, and is found in SDAH, hymn 336. After the theme song, right about now, the next voice you'll hear is that of Pastor Charles Bediako of Stuttgart, Germany. As Pastor gives us the word, pay rapt attention and be blessed. Oh 
praise the Lord, praise the Lord. I'm so excited to be part of this revival, this special occasion, and I'm so thankful to the leadership of Hope Channel for this revival. Uh, it is time and a great opportunity for us to really to be revived and to be refreshed. And so I am thankful and I pray that the Lord will really be with us, the Lord will help us to really get to know Him in this week in a special way as we have this revival. It, indeed, the fountain is open. I like the theme so much. The fountain is open indeed. I am personally fascinated by fountains. Uh, when I was a little boy, <laughs> I always wondered where all the water came from. So much water that it can keep flowing, it can keep coming without stopping. And my first experience of a fountain was when my parents took us to the village, our village, and we were supposed to go to a stream and fetch water, just carry water home for the cooking, for the washing, and for all the other things. And what a surprise! I got there and I saw a huge rock. This was big and a lot of water gushing out of the rock and coming over and over, never stopping. No, I can relate the statement of Jesus to uh, the fountain, to, to that fountain, the statement which was taken by the leaders who put this revival together. The text is found in John chapter 7, verses 37 to 39. On the last day of the great day of the festival, Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, rivers of water will flow from within them. By this, he meant the Holy Spirit, whom those who believed in him were later to receive. Up to that time, the Spirit had not been given, since Jesus had not yet been glorified. Indeed, the fountain is open. It cannot be stopped. It keeps flowing. It is free. It's fresh. It fills. And it is very exciting. Let us pray. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus. We are so grateful for this opportunity to be refreshed, to be revived, and to be filled with the fountain. Lord, we pray that this week we will see you face to face we will get to know you more and we will surrender our hearts to you please please speak to us in this message don't leave it to me i just want to be a channel that you are going to speak through me to your children please please i want you to speak to me first and use me take my lips take my heart take my mind and use me to speak to your children because of jesus Amen. Indeed, the fountain is open. This is interesting. It really it is comforting and it's encouraging. But as I read the whole passage of John chapter 7, I was a bit shaking. I really was touched. You know, I was really cautious of what is happening. Indeed, we need to be very careful. I see something that is going on in the characters that are described in John chapter 7 that depicts some aspect of human nature which we need to be very careful about because it seems the same thing happens even today and it is somehow unsettling. I realize that something is going on in the passage and it shows me that it's, it is very, very easy to miss the point or lose focus just for the excitement. You know, sometimes we can be so involved in something that we miss the importance and we miss the benefits. Yeah. Let me narrate an incident maybe to illustrate the point I'm trying to make. Just a few years ago, I was traveling from Stuttgart, Germany to Columbus, Ohio. Now, I had to take three flights to arrive in Ohio. The, the journey was pleasant. It was okay. Everything was 
good, going very well in the journey until I got to my last transit airport, which was Cleveland Airport, Cleveland, Ohio. Now, as I landed in that airport and I got into the terminal, it was so exciting. What a big terminal, beautiful airport terminal. So I decided to enjoy the terminal because I had about four hours of time before my flight from Cleveland to Columbus was to take off. So I decided to go into the shops and to the restaurants and the lounges and look at the displays and, and, and you know, with four hours, I just wanted to enjoy myself at the airport. So I did some window shopping, I checked the restaurants, I checked uh, the menus and I connected my Wi-Fi and then I served the internet a little. I was enjoying the airport. But as I looked at my watch, I realized that it was time to go and board my flight for Columbus. But when I went to the gate, the flight was gone. I was one hour late. I missed the point. I missed the reason why I was there at Cleveland Airport. I was just traveling to Columbus. But the excitement of the airport made me miss my flight. And that was the last flight of the evening, of the day. So I had to wait until morning to get the next flight to Columbus. So they took me to a hotel, I rested, and I boarded the morning flight to Columbus. But the point is, I missed one day of the whole program that I was going to do in Columbus. I missed the point why I was there. And please, don't miss the essence. Don't miss the point of this revival. Don't miss the point of our Christian experience. Now, it is very easy to lose the point, to lose the focus, just for the peripherals, just for the excitement. But we need to be very, very careful. In fact, in the, in the passage, I see that is exactly what is happening. Let's pick up a few words so that I can just explain and make a point, just, just learn a few lessons from what is happening in this passage. Just so that we can remember it easily, I like to use alliteration, you know, just want to pick one letter that, that will really identifies a few words in the passage so that we can learn something from it. And since the key word is fountain, I just want to use the letter F, you know, pick some F letter words so that we can learn something from what is going on in, the, in, in this passage and then we can be cautious about what is happening here. Well. The first F word that I want to uh, focus on is the festival, you know. There was a festival going on in the passage. And then, in the festival you had a feast. The second F is a feast, a feast. And then you see faith, F, faith. And then there is the fresh. And then it's free and fail, to fail. Let me just explain these words and pick up some lessons from it. You know, just, I, I want to say, however, that um, maybe you can think of the first three as a problem, F's, and then the last three as maybe a solution, F's. Just to help you to remember this, so that if this can stay with you, uh, let's use it. So the first F letter word that I want us to consider is the festival. Now, just a little word about this festival. You know, God had told the Israelites to celebrate the festival for seven days, the festival of booths, the festival of tabernacles, if you want. And they were supposed to get out of the home or the house and live in booths or you can say tents for seven days. You know, God wanted them to remember the time in the wilderness and how he protected them. So they had some exact instructions to follow. The type of material to use for the booths were all there in the law. And the different sacrifices they had to offer were also all there. You know, um, even in the book of Zachariah, Zachariah told something, wrote something about this festival. Zachariah chapter 14, verses 16 to 17. Um, reading from the New International Version. Uh, Zacharias writes, Then the survivors from all nations that have attacked Jerusalem will go up year after year and worship the king. 
the Lord Almighty and celebrate the festival of tabernacles. If any of the peoples of the earth do not go up to Jerusalem to worship the King, the Lord Almighty, they will have no rain. So, now this was an important festival, but the whole point of the festival was about Jesus. You know, it pointed to him. He was the shade, you know, the shade, the festival signified the shade that protected them from the sun and the water that they drank in the wilderness, the food that was rained from, the manna that was rained from heaven. And, and, and even the harvest at the time they were getting, Jesus provided the shade. Jesus provided the water. Jesus provided the food that they ate and the harvest that they were enjoying. Jesus provided them. But the problem was, he was right there, right among them, and they did not realize it. They missed the point of the festival. They missed the point. Is, you see, it is very easy to miss the essence. We could go through all the motions of worship and service and miss the point. And the point is Jesus. You know, why they were organizing and then sacrificing and following the rules and rituals. And it took all their attention. They missed the whole focus. Who was Jesus? My brothers and my sisters, fellow believers, we really need to be careful. We could be keeping the commandments. We could be worshiping. We could be serving. And we could be giving and still miss a relationship with Jesus. God have mercy on us. Missing the point because they were busy. The show of the festival distracts from the point of the festival. And, and sometimes we do that. You know, sometimes it is in many, many Christian activities. For example, look at Christmas. Christmas is supposed to be a time to remember the birth of Jesus. We know that Jesus was not born at that time. But yes, let's take it for granted that people are supposed to remember the birth of Jesus. But when Christmas comes, look at what happens. People are shopping, people are eating, people are drinking, and they forget all about Jesus. So please, if we are not careful, we will go through festivals, we will go through ordinances, we will go through so many things and forget and lose and miss the point who is Jesus. The whole point is Jesus. Everything we are doing as Christians is to help us to have a relationship with Jesus, to surrender to Him, to trust Him, and to believe in Him. And the festival, the activities of the festival, they kept them so busy, they missed the point. We need to be careful. What is it that we are doing that will really take all our attention so much so that we will miss the point who is Jesus. May the Lord have mercy on us. And that brings us to the next word, which is feast. You know, the people at this festival, they were supposed to eat, they, they were supposed to feast, and they were supposed to rejoice, enjoying so much so that they did not notice the main man of the festival. He was among them and they did not notice him. It's the same thing today. Some of us, we enjoy the service. We enjoy the message. We enjoy the Sabbath. We enjoy the church. We enjoy the fellowship. We enjoy the meals. We, even some ministers, some pastors, we enjoy the ministry. But sometimes Jesus is completely forgotten. The joy should be because of Jesus. But this, we are having the joy without Jesus. You know, the joy is because of Jesus, not just the means of the joy. So where still others enjoy the blessings God has given them, and it takes all their attention, so they miss a relationship with Jesus. Please, my brothers and sisters, don't miss the point. Don't let anything distract you to miss a relationship with Jesus. Don't miss the point. And 
brings us to the third word that I want us to consider. It's faith. You know, if you look into the passage, you know, the people miss the point because of their faith. You know, to benefit from the fountain, to benefit from the flow, to benefit from the abundance of the flow, you need to have faith. You need to believe and trust in Jesus. You see, the people in this passage, they got the chance to decide. You know, they saw the evidence. Some of them used the opportunity. You know, if you read John chapter 7, verses 10 to 13 in the New International Version, and I read, it says, However, after his brothers had left for the festival, he went also not publicly but in secret. Now at the festival, the Jewish leaders were watching for Jesus and asking, Where is he? Among the crowds, there were widespread whispering about him. Some said, He's a good man. Others said, No, he deceives people. But no one would say anything publicly about him for fear of the leaders. You see, you could group the people into several groups, but let me mention a few. You know, there were the brothers of Jesus, and then the, the leaders, and also the priests, and the common people. So at least you could have four groups in this passage. You know, the brothers were ridiculing Jesus. No, they, no, they didn't believe in him. They were, they were saying, well, if you are... If you say you are the son of man, if you say you are, you are making miracles, this festival is a big opportunity for you. Why don't you go there and show off, you know, show your powers? You know, they were just ridiculing him. They didn't believe in him, his brothers. Sometimes those who are very closest, those who are supposed to believe, those who see the evidence, they are the ones who deny it. So his brothers did not believe in him. And what about the leaders? The leaders were trying to kill him. You know, their faith was misplaced. They did not believe in him. And the common people, the third group, they wanted to listen to him. You know, some of them, out of, out of curiosity, and some of them were just looking for bread. You know, if you read John chapter 6, John had recorded that Jesus had fed about 5,000 people, and so people were following him. They just wanted bread to eat. So my question to you is, what really motivates you to follow Jesus? Is it because you trust Him? Is it because of what you appreciate what He has done for you? Or is it because of what you want? In order to benefit from the fountain, you really need to have faith in Jesus, to trust Him impl implicitly, to trust Him without any doubt. John 7 verse 17 reads, Anyone who chooses to do the will of God will find out whether my teaching comes from God or whether I speak of my own. So Jesus is saying that if we are willing to follow his instructions, if we are willing to obey God, if we are willing to obey the commandments of God, we will really know that he is the Messiah. We will really know that he is the son of God. So what I want to say to you, my brother and my sister, is that if your faith is not grounded, you are offended by a genuine. Now Jesus was genuine, but because their faith was not grounded in scripture, their faith was not grounded in knowledge, they were offended. So they missed the point. In order to just benefit from what is happening from our Christian experience, we really need faith in Jesus. We need to trust Jesus, trust Him implicitly. And the next F word is fresh. You know, water freshens, water cleanses, water purifies, water renews the strength. And so when Jesus says, come and drink freely, what Jesus is in a sense saying is that, come, I will cleanse you. Come, I will forgive you of your sins. Come, I will make you clean. I will make you worthy. I will make you different. I can transform you. So this water that Jesus is talking about, it is the power to overcome sin. It is the power to live without sin. 
You see, one important aspect of this festival was also the sin offering. You know, if you read Numbers chapter 29, verse 16, they were supposed to sacrifice a goat as a sin offering. You know that a goat doesn't really take away sin. It's just a symbol. Jesus is the one who takes away sin, yet they missed the point. You know, they were just following the instructions without really understanding that this is pointing to Jesus. And this Jesus is here among us. He is here. And they failed to really realize that Jesus was there with them. And not only this festival, there were so many different festivals that pointed to Christ, like the festival of the unleavened bread. You know, in this festival, they were supposed to clean their house and make sure that every day, everything leavened, everything that symbolizes sin was out of their homes. They were clean and clean. And when Jesus was there, they did that. They cleaned and cleaned the house just as a symbol of the cleansing from sin. And Jesus, who cleanses from sin, was there. And they did not realize it. They missed the point. My brother, my sister, be careful you don't miss the point. Jesus is the source of all cleansing. He is the one who purifies the heart. Of course, the heart is the source of all wickedness. But there they were, focused on cleansing their homes, sacrificing and sin offerings as a symbol of forgiveness as a symbol of cleansing from sin. Yet, yet the Lamb of God who takes away sin was among them and they missed the point. The, the, the point number five is that it was free. Salvation was free. The water of the fountain is free. You know, let me read the text again. John 7, 37 says, On the last day of the great day of the festival, Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. It was free. You didn't have to pay anything. Free salvation, you know. It is difficult for so many people to accept. You know, it's a difficult concept for people. The Pharisees and the leaders, you know, they were working so hard on earning their salvation. You know, they preferred to pay for a sheep, they prefer to pay for all different kinds of sacrifices. That's thinking that their effort is what made them clean, made them forgiven. But Jesus said, it is free. Just come and I'll give it to you. You know, it was impossible for them just to come and humble themselves and just get the free cleansing from Jesus. My brothers and sisters, don't miss the point. You know, it's not about what you do, what you struggle to do. You know, it's just about having a relationship with Jesus and getting Him to help you so that you can overcome sin. It is free. It's not what you pay. It's not what you do. It's not from your own strength. It's just your relationship with Jesus. He is the one who gives you the strength to be able to do what is right. And without Him, it is impossible. And the last F. Number six is fail. And that is the strength. Jesus said in verse 38, he says, Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, rivers of living water will flow from within them. You know, what Jesus is saying here is that you yourself, you will be filled with the water. And when you are filled with the water, you become also a source of water. And verse 39 says, By this he meant the Spirit, whom those who believe in him were later to receive. And up to that time, the Spirit had not been given, since Jesus had not yet been glorified. No, it's so Jesus is talking about the Holy Spirit, that we will be filled with the Spirit. That we will have the strength and the power that he has supplied. You know, he told the disciples, you shall receive power. And you will be my witnesses. So the Spirit is what is being talked about here. So my brothers, my sisters, in this revival, if there is anything you want to do, strive to be filled with the Holy Spirit. He is the one 
who changes our character. He is the one who transforms us. He is the one who gives us strength to even do God's will. Jesus said it is impossible to get to heaven without the Holy Spirit. That's what he told Nicodemus. John chapter 3. When Nicodemus went to him in the night, he says, Unless a man be born again of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. So the Holy Spirit to be filled, when Jesus is talking about the fountain, to be filled with water, he's talking about with being filled with the Holy Spirit. So the whole point that we shouldn't miss is that we should be filled with the Holy Spirit. He is the one who facilitates the relationship with Jesus. Without him, we will miss the point. We will miss the whole focus. So in conclusion, let me just suggest seven points that we can follow which will help us to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Quickly, let's go through this in conclusion. Number one, if we are to be filled with the fountain, if we are to drink, we just have to ask for the Holy Spirit. Luke chapter 11 verses 9 to 13. So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who has receives, for the one who seeks find, and the one who knocks, the door will be open. Which of you fathers, if your son asks you for fish, will give him snake instead? Or if he asks you for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then do you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children. How much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? You know, sometimes we quote this text. We say, ask, it shall be given to you. Knock and seek. And then we stop there and we ask for money. We ask for material things. But here, if you read the whole text, Jesus is talking about asking for the Holy Spirit. So I tell you, my, my brother, my sister, I urge you, I plead with you, don't let a day go by without asking for the Holy Spirit. You know, Acts chapter 1 verse 14, the disciples just asked. They asked and the Holy Spirit was given to them. So point number one, ask. Point number two, be willing to obey. Be willing to obey. Let's take this from the Bible. See, Acts chapter 5, verse 32. Acts chapter 5, verse 32. Um, Peter is saying, We are witnesses of these things, and so is the Holy Spirit, who is given by God to those who obey Him. You know, Peter is saying that the Holy Spirit is given by God to those who obey Him. So if we are willing to obey, if we ask and we are willing to obey God, the Holy Spirit is given to us. And to confirm this, let's read John, John chapter 14, verses 15 to 17. Listen to what Jesus is saying here. He says, If you love me, obey my commands. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate who will never leave you. Verse 17 says, He is the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth. So Jesus is saying, love, obey, and receive. When we talk about the Holy Spirit, we love God, we obey Him, and then we, we receive. So point number one, ask. Point number two, be willing to obey. Number three, seek Him in His Word. Seek Him in His Word. Acts chapter 10, verse 44, verses 44 and 45. Acts chapter 10, verses 44 and 45. It reads, even as Peter was saying these things, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who were listening to the message. The Jewish believers who came with Peter were amazed that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles too. So you see, Peter was talking and those who were listening, those who were listening to the word received the Holy Spirit. So if we really want to have the Holy Spirit, we really have to seek Him. In the Word, in the Bible, read the Bible on a daily basis. Jesus even said in John chapter 6, verse 63, He said, The Spirit alone gives eternal life. Human effort accomplishes nothing. And the very words I have spoken to you are spirit and life. Jesus says, The Word I have spoken, the Spirit, 
and life. So we have to really seek Jesus in the Word. Point number four. Point number four, assemble for worship. Acts chapter 2, verse 1. I mean, this is a text that we all know, you know, it's a very common text. Acts chapter 2, verse 1, it says, On the day of Pentecost, all the believers were meeting together in one place. And that is when the Holy Spirit came upon all of them. They were meeting in one place. And another text, Acts chapter 4, verse 31. After this prayer, the meeting place shook. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit. Then they preached the word with boldness. You know, if you read the book of Acts, you will notice that, that I find that when the people of God have met together, that is when He pours the Spirit on them. So, my brother, my sister, strive to be at meetings when believers are worshiping, when believers are studying. And praying, camp meetings, you no know, revivals, be there. Because that is where God pours the Spirit on us. That is where we are filled with the water from the fountain. Point number four was that. And point number five, be willing to humble yourself. You know, God resists the proud. It was only after the disciples had humbled themselves and they have really let go of the power struggle and let go of all their ambitions that God poured the Spirit on them. So just humble yourself and God will pour His Spirit on you. Just imagine when John and James, you know, the, the sons of thunder, when they had not humbled themselves, when they had not learned to humble themselves. Imagine if Jesus had given them the Spirit at that time. You know that when Jesus wanted to pass through a Samaritan village and the villagers said, no, we won't let you pass through our city. Listen to what John and his brother asked Jesus, Lord, please allow us to command fire to burn these people. You see, if God had given them the power, they would have been burning cities. But you see, God is not in the business of burning people. He's in the business of saving people. And so for some of us, if we have that pride in us, if we have that, you know, that anger in us all the time, if God is to give us His Holy Spirit, we will destroy people. We wouldn't really, <laughs> we wouldn't really, you know, use the Holy Spirit for any good. And so let us humble ourselves. Just, just calm down. And then God will pour his Holy Spirit on us. And point number six, be willing to forgive. Be willing to forgive for some of us. You now we hold so many grudges in our hearts. We have something against this person. We have something against a brother, a sister, even a husband, a wife, a child, a parent. We are holding so many grudges that if God is to send His Holy Spirit, He will not get a place to stay because our hearts are full of grudges. Hearts are full of pain and, and bitterness. Brother, my sister, let go. Don't hold any grudge. Who has hurt you? Just forgive them and let go. Now, if you keep thinking about somebody who did something against you, think of them. Somebody said it's like letting, letting them live in your mind without paying any rent. We didn't do you any good. Let them go. And sometimes some of the things we really hurt ourselves, we hold grudges about, they are really nothing. I remember that when I was a young boy, and my brothers, you know, my siblings, they were always teasing me. You know, there was a word when they said those words. They, they, I was so angry and I was just... I was so angry and, and mad at them. Sometimes I would even throw stones at them. What did they say? They said that my face was too dark and so they called me Joe Blackie. You know, there was, um, there was a baboon in the Kumasi Zoo and they called, people called the baboon Joe Blackie. And so because they said, because I was so black, I looked like Joe Blackie. And so when they called me Joe Blackie, I would be so angry. 
But as I grew up, I realized that this is nothing. If they say I am Joe Blackie, it doesn't make me a baboon. It doesn't paint my face. It doesn't do anything. If my face is black, it's already black. What they say doesn't change anything, so why should I be angry? And sometimes what people say, it doesn't change anything. It doesn't affect us in any way, but we decide to brood over it and then keep angry. When we do that, we just pretend the Holy Spirit, I mean, we just prevent the Holy Spirit from filling our hearts. I pray that we will let go of some of these things. Hanging on to them benefits us in no way. So be willing to forgive. And the last point, which is point number seven, desire the Holy Spirit more than anything. Psalm 63 verse 1 reads, Oh God, you are my God. I earnestly search for you. My soul thirsts for you. My whole body longs for you in this patch, in weary land where there is no water. And so if you read Isaiah chapter 44 verse 3, it says, I will pour water to quench your thirst and to irrigate your patch fields. And I will pour out my spirit on your, descend on your descendants. And my blessing on your children. So you see, my brothers and sisters, we must really hunger for the Holy Spirit. Not just a casual See, Sometimes, you no, know, we just kneel down and say, Oh Lord, please fill us with the Holy Spirit. No, not that. We really have to be hungry for the Holy Spirit. We really have to seriously seek the Holy Spirit. And when we do that, God is going to fill us with His Spirit. You see, God has manners. No, he doesn't enter anybody, you know. It's not like somebody who will just enter your room without knocking. No. Jesus stands at the door of our heart and he knocks. He says, if anyone will open the door and let me in, I will come and stay with him. And so God is waiting for us to really, really open our hearts and allow him to dwell in us, allow the Spirit to come in us. And we have to really show him that we are willing to be filled with the Holy Spirit. I think sometimes we don't understand the essence of the Holy Spirit. Sometimes we don't understand the need for the Holy Spirit. That's why we don't seek Him. That's why we are not filled with the fountain. But somebody put it in this way that I like so much. He said that imagine that you had 100 pages to, I mean you have a, a, a sheet of paper and you are supposed to make 1000 copies and you have a choice to use a pencil to copy 1,000 copies and you have a photocopy, a photocopier to make 1,000 copies. Would you choose a pencil or a photocopier? I guess you would choose a photocopier. Or maybe if you have a journey, you have to travel 1,000 kilometers and you have a choice to walk, use your feet or use an aeroplane. Which one would you use? I guess you would decide to use the airplane. Or maybe you are supposed to plow a field. 1,000 acres. You have a pickaxe. You can use the pickaxe to plow 1,000 acres. Or you have a tractor. Maybe 3,000 horsepower tractor. Big one. Would you use the tractor or the pickaxe? I guess you use the tractor. I guess you use... The photocopier. I guess you use the airplane. I guess you use the tractor because it's powered. It has power to accomplish more than you can do with your hands. And so it is the same way if we try to be Christians without the Holy Spirit. If we try to minister without the Holy Spirit. If we try to overcome, this, overcome sin without the Holy Spirit. It's like plowing with a pickaxe when you have um, a tractor. The Holy Spirit is the power. It can do more can accomplish more. He can help us to accomplish more than we can do in our own strength. So I pray that we will seek the Holy Spirit, that we will be filled with the Holy Spirit, that in this revival, we will really go to Jesus and not miss the point and base our Christian experience and whatever we do on the relationship with Christ. And we can do that if we ask Him and if we obey Him. And if we seek Him in His Word, if we assemble for worship, if we humble ourselves, and if we forgive other people who have sinned against us, and if we seek Him, 
seriously. May the Lord bless us. Let us pray. Oh Lord, I thank you in the name of Jesus for this opportunity that we can come before you and that we can learn of you, that we can be revived, that we can drink freely from the fountain. Please help us to seriously consider drinking from this fountain. Help us to consider seriously coming to you. Help us not to miss the point. Help us not to be so busy worshiping, obeying commandments and still miss a relationship with you. I pray that during this revival and during the rest of our lives, we will seek you on a daily basis and have a relationship with you. Thank you so much and bless us in the name of Jesus. Amen. God for his words that abided forever. I want to thank you so much Pastor Charles Bediako for leading us to the fountain and thank you dear viewers for tuning in. Please join us same time tomorrow but we would urge you to tune in at 5 a.m. for a special encounter with the Lord. Good night and stay blessed. Thank you.